This is your five tech things you should know about and it's brought to you by Citrix and go to Assist Express. Hey, guess what? You can build your own iPad. This is how. Hello everybody, Jeffrey Powers here. Welcome to the five tech things you should know about for you weekend warriors in tech that don't want too much information overload. This is your five tech things you should know about for this week. Well, whether T-Mobile's moving to AT&T or not, it really doesn't matter. They're still coming out with some pretty cool stuff. And one of the things that they're coming out with is what's called caller ID. And you're thinking to yourself, hmm, the caller ID, wasn't that around already? Actually, no. If somebody was to call you on your phone and it didn't have it in your name list, you would have had no idea who it is. You just see a number or a blocked or an unknown or something like that. With T-Mobile, they're rolling out a thing that's not really called caller ID, they're calling it name ID. And the idea is that they'll give you a name along with a phone number, if a phone number and a name is associated with each other. That way you have a better idea of who's calling and how to do. You know, it's not going to be a free service either though. An extra $3.99 a month you'll be able to find out who's calling you, who, who's attached to a certain number. Now, my cell phone, if you were to call, if I was to call you, you'd see my cell phone number, you'd see my name, because I, I kept that pretty open. There's still going to be people that block their name, block their numbers, so you might still get unknown names, unknown numbers, like my mom, who's got a track phone, and she just calls me, and it's like blocked. It's like, Mom, I don't know if you're the IRS or, or a, a telemarketer or my mom please unblock the number and find somebody to, to help you, like me. I don't know. PayPal is talking about a new service. It's called Android to Android. It's kind of like the bump feature. You need a phone that has what's called an NFC enabled device. That's near field communication device. So basically what would happen is you have your two Android phones and you want to do a PayPal. Well, one person would initiate it, the other person would initiate to receive it, and then you'd do something like this. You probably wouldn't have to bump it or anything like that. You just be within a certain radius, a very small radius, and all of a sudden you could be paying for something. This would be great for somebody that wants to set up something uh, transaction to transaction where there's not a cash register nearby. So it looks pretty good. I'm a little weary on it. I want to see this, uh, see this system up front and personal first. Um, I'm hoping that it'll have some, things like uh, 10 seconds on turn itself off once you've hit that enable button. Um, and of course, any other type of transaction, it's got to come back and say, hey, are you absolutely sure that you want this transaction to happen? Yes, no, or put in a PIN number or something. So it's, it's kind of like the RFIDs. If, they're, if somebody's in a close proximity, they might be able to get into your systems and get into your bank accounts. And, you don't want to lose money that way. I don't think so. But anyway, PayPal's giving this a try. We'll see what happens. We'll keep you apprised if it's good or bad or whatnot and go from there. Check this out. Guy who has a website over at ETSY.com is his online store. He makes belt buckles, which is pretty cool. But he makes belt buckles with mice. Whether you're a Mac fan or a PC fan, they have several different uh, belt buckle mice. Uh, if, you're, if you're an old compact fan, you can get yourself a two-button compact mouse and you can sit back there and go click, 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 click. I know you're not seeing what I'm doing, but I'm basically clicking my belt buckle mouse. I don't know. It's kind of a little fun little thing, you know. I wouldn't be wearing this every single day of the week, but maybe on a geek day or something like that. It would be a cool little thing. You can get PC or Mac, $15, so it's a pretty cool price. I'm, I'm assuming that's not including shipping. But you can go over to his website and find out. I'll have his website in the show notes. So go over to the show notes over at geekazine.com and you will get all that information. And now for the five things that I learned this week and it's brought to you by Stitcher. Go over to stitcher.com forward slash geek. Enter in your email address. Download the application for your iPhone, your Android, your Palm, or your Blackberry, or your iPad, and you could win yourself $100. All you have to do is go over to stitcher.com forward slash geek to find out more. Now let's get in five things that I learned this week. Number five, Microsoft will get 72 new stores to compete with Apple uh, to basically sell their stuff. After all, if you're driving down the street and you're thinking to yourself, hmm, I think I need to get me some milk, some bread, some cookies, some 
oh yeah, I need a copy of Microsoft Office too. We'll see what happens. I, I won't have a Microsoft Office store in my neck of the woods. So if you do have a Microsoft store, let me know what they're like uh, over at Geekazine. Number four, goodbye Sherwood Schwartz. You can sit back and hear your tale. One of that faithful trip. Number three, there are 88 episodes of Pawn Stars. I should know. I watched them all on Netflix this weekend. Full TV series and DVD box sets are like crack. Now, of course, we all know what happened with Netflix. They decided to split it into DVDs and streaming. If you want them both, you get to have to pay $16. And they offer absolutely no new features, which is really, really sad. I hope Netflix appeases people more than just that free application for your Nintendo DS, which I don't have one anyway. Number two, Google Plus hit 10 million users on Tuesday. It's expected 20 million by weekend and 3 million still disappointed. There's absolutely no Farmville. And finally, Harry Potter fans lined up to watch the last episode of the series, Deathly Hallows Part 2. Star Wars fans taunted Harry Potter fans for standing in line for hours, then realized that they were standing in that same line. Here's the spoiler, Voldemir is not Potter's father. I'm personally waiting for the Family Guy interpretation of Harry Potter series before I start watching it. And that's the five things that I learned this week. All right, a new music service. Actually, it's not very new, but it's new for the United States customers. They had it overseas. It's called Spotify, and it's supposed to compete with iTunes. It's supposed to compete with the Amazon Cloud Store and, and all that. It's a cloud service where you can download and you can listen to music. You have a free version, then you have your paid versions, your premium versions. There is an iPhone app for it, but you have to have a premium. You have to pay for it, basically, to actually use the iPhone service. I believe there's also an Android uh, application for it too. But once again, to do any type of streaming, you'll need that. You'll need to pay for it. However, you can, you can sort your songs on your computers and actually tell Spotify that these are your songs on your computer. Then when you're out, you can pull up your iPhone app and you say, hey, I want to listen to this song that's on my computer. It can search your computer and all of a sudden, boom, there it is. Therefore, there is a small little risk, small little risk because it's actually connecting up to your machine to pull the song to bring it to you. So it's not really peer-to-peer -peer or anything like that. So don't, don't get it confused with like a Napster because the interface looks a lot like how Napster used to look. It's kind of like mixing iTunes with Napster and you've got this interface. Now, Spotify, right now, the free service, you got to get an invite code for. You want to pay for it, you know, they're fine. It's like, okay, go ahead, pay for it. Here, here's the copy. you got to download the application onto your desktop and if you want to share your music on your computer. And, of course, you can have the, uh, the iPhone or the Android application for that. So, no word on how Spotify is. I've played with it for a little bit. I do like the streaming option. I like the fact that I can sit in a at home or in a coffee shop. It's kind of like Pandora in a way, except in this case, it's not saying, okay, well, you're going to listen to this song and this song and this song, and we're not really going to give you a playlist too much. You can conform your playlist, but you're still going to get songs that we think that you, sh you might want in this playlist. And it does a great job. Don't get me wrong on that. Spotify is a great player. We'll see what happens down the road. There are some issues, questions about how it's connecting up and if there's going to be any type of holes into your system that you might want to be concerned about. So far, so good. If you got your invite, check it out. If not, you're going to have to wait for an invite. I don't have any invite codes, unfortunately, right now. That could change as this video comes out. I might have a million after that. But once they come out, I'll send it to you. So if you want to send me your email address, feel free to do so. Geekazine at gmail.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got a brand new sponsor on the five tech things you should know about Citrix and GoToAssist Express. Now, I've used GoToAssist Express many times in the past, and I tell you, it's one of the best programs that you can use, especially if you're an IT, especially if you're not an IT, if you're training people on how to use programs, if you need to uh, correct somebody's problems, if you want to show desktops and you want to you know, work back and forth on projects, this is a great program. Citrix, uh, which is known for virtual desktop situations, does this eloquently and perfectly. I'm going to tell you something. Every time that I've used a product by Citrix, 
has never failed me, unless an internet connection issue. That, beside the point, the reality is the program is solid and it always works when you have a decent internet connection. This is how it works. You call up your buddy your, or your buddy calls you and says, hey, my computer is all dead and broken and whatever. You say, okay, go up to this web page or you can send them an email, go up to this web page. They put in a, a nine digit number and they connect or you connect up to their computer. You can control their screen, you can move their mouse, you can do what you need to do, get in, get out. They can even set it so if they're off uh, to lunch and you're doing service pack updates and it needs to reboot the computer, you don't have to have them next to the computer to, uh, to get back in and finish everything. So it's perfect for those computers that don't have a person nearby. You set it up once and then you can connect up multiple times. I've done that many, many times myself. This is a great program. I could talk about it for hours, but the reality is you should try it. Put it into your IT toolbox and find out for yourself. How do you do that? Go over to go to assist.com forward slash podcast. Go to assist.com forward slash podcast and get a 30 day free trial. Make as much money as you want and then you'll see the power of GoToAssist Express. Support smarter with GoToAssist. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, check this out. This guy knows his stuff. He knows it so much that he decided, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to go pay $5.99 for an iPad. I want to build my own. Guy's in China, and he uh, he posted this up. It's a three-part series. Posted it up on the Chinese version of YouTube, which is like Yu Ling or something like that. His name is Liu Xinying. Hopefully, Xinying. I hopefully I pronounced that right. And he created this three-part series on how he created his own iPad. Now, what he did was he, uh, he went from soup to nuts, basically, and created this iPad and then sped up the process for the video. So it's a three-part series. You can watch how he does it, but if you want to get an idea of how you're going to do it, you can, you're going to need something more than the video. I'm assuming once he's done, he'll put in some sort of specs. He used a lot of parts, uh, some from, I, from different tablets and stuff like that, or computers, and parts from his uh, personal, personal stock or something like that. So, but it's pretty cool, and the end result is really, really nice. Now, when you watch the uh, the iPad as it's getting made, it had Windows on, it had Mac on, and it had the iPad software on. So, pretty cool stuff. I can't wait to see if anybody tries to do this in the modding community in the States. But for now, you can check out this video, which is pretty darn awesome, I think. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, that is your five tech things that you should know about. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Did you wonder, hmm, maybe I should like it? I don't know. It's kind of weird. That guy with the weird beard and everything. That's, that's, I don't know. Anyway, if you do like it, if you don't like it, let me know. Go over to iTunes. Go over to your favorite catcher that you're watching this on. Please give it a ranking. The more that I know, the more I can change. You can also catch me on Twitter at Geekazine or email me geekazine at gmail.com and I'll respond to any query that you have. If you love it, if you hate it, if you don't like the way I part my hair, I don't know. Let me know. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for listening. This is the 5 Tech Things You Should Know About. We will see you next week for another great episode of 5 More Tech Things That You Should Know About, You Weekend Warriors. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care. Those itches like wildfire, wildfire.